What is behind the timing of the Sussex's new publicity plans? How does the royal photo scandal end? And has Prince Harry's legal fight in the US taken a new twist? The royal stories just keep coming and coming. Hello and welcome to Palace Confidential. I'm Jo Elvin and back this week to talk about the big royal stories is the Daily Mail's royal editor, Rebecca English, and she's joined by the Mail on Sunday's editor-at-large, Charlotte Griffiths, and the Daily Mail's diary editor, Richard Eden. Welcome to you all. Now, before we get into it, a quick reminder to please do subscribe to our channel if you don't already. That way you'll never miss an episode. Oh, and while you're at it, give us a like and a share with anyone you think might enjoy it because it really does make a big difference to us. Thanks for that. Now, as you know, lots of big news this week, but let's start with just a bit of fun. Rebecca. <laughs> Thankfully. Our Rebecca has been playing dollies with the Queen. What on earth? Yeah, it was actually a bit of an unexpected part of the day. So I was at Buckingham Palace on Tuesday with this brilliant organisation called WOW, Women of the World. If you don't know about it, they've got affiliates all over the globe. They're fantastic. Queen Camilla's president. And she was welcoming their big WOW bus, which has gone around the country, encouraging young girls to get involved and, and to kind of uh, look at their you know profile within the world. And she was welcoming this bus back to Buckingham Palace. And we had a ray of stars anyway. We had Spice Girl Mel B, who's now a domestic abuse campaign. We had Dame Helen Mirren. But uh, the Queen was also presented with her very own Barbie, who of course is the woman of the moment. Um, and actually, I think the, the boss of Mattel actually flew over from LA to give it to her. And what was so brilliant is she had, obviously she was expecting this, she had let them know what she would be wearing on the day. And they made an exact replica of that outfit from her, her dress to her Amanda Wakely cape, to her shoes, to her handbag, to even her little bracelet. It was a, an absolutely identical outfit. Well, I'm just, I'm so proud of my friend Amanda Wakely, who she, I'd seen the night before at her house that she had the invitation. So for once... You knew more than me. You didn't tell me about yeah. the engagement, but I already knew. It is that beautiful Amanda Wakely cape. But at one point, and I hope we can see on screen now, that our Queen gives you a little smile on camera. Well, the... <laughs> The Barbie, let's just, I'm trying to think of the, the Barbie word. Barbie smiled the, at you. The bar, I'm trying to think of the words here. You know, the Barbie was a very youthful looking Barbie. And this is what I really like about Queen Camilla. She does have a sense of humour about these things. So she kind of looked at us and was a bit like, well, this has taken 50 years off me, hasn't it? You know, she wasn't going to pretend it was an exact replica of, of herself. Well, I do hope they're going to do a Ken doll of King Charles. Oh, that would be nice. As long as it's... Ken, not Alan. <laughs> well, if you've seen the film, then you'll understand. You'll understand why I said that. And wearing Ryan Gosling's suit from the Oscars. Oh, well, that would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bright pink. We need to see that. Let's move on, Charlotte. You know we love Princess Anne here on Palace Confidential, but there was a bit of a kerfuffle online, wasn't there, when her, about her apparently not curtsying to Queen Camilla? Well, she came along at the Commonwealth Service and greeted Camilla, who, after all, is her friend, and they have um, Andrew Parker Bowles in common. And she just Say sort no of more. said, yeah. Hi. yeah, as friends. Yeah. And she just sort of said hi to her friend, as you do, but she forgot to, you know, actually curtsy and be a bit more formal. And I sort of really don't blame her because, of course, we all love Princess Anne, but also because they've just known each other for years. And although it was a bit of a protocol slip, I think they're just they're just friends, aren't they? So it's hard to remember sometimes. Is it a protocol slip with that, you know, like first bloodline of the royal family? Is, is it really that serious? Well, theoretically, she should curtsy to the Queen. But I think, as Charlotte rightly says, they know each other. And the one thing is... The Queen's not hung up on those kind of minutiae of protocol, so she probably wouldn't have even noticed. And what what, was, so the, what, what yeah. was the what was the Queen's reaction to this? I think she didn't even notice, yeah, did she? She just gave her a peck on the cheek yeah. and just sort of said hi. Camilla's not the kind of person that's going to have a diva tantrum. Let's face it, it's yeah. just not her vibe at all. Um, I think maybe if it was one of the younger members of the royal family, we might notice it a bit more. Um, maybe even it would be a snub, but this isn't a snub, is it? <laughs> no, no, I don't think it is. Oh, well. Sorry. That's no fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, Richard, we also, just changing tone completely, we had the, the sad occasion of the funeral of uh, Thomas Kingston this week. A really private affair, wasn't it? It was. I mean, journalists didn't attend, or we didn't send photographers at request of the family, but um, he was given a royal send-off. It was a sort of funeral cortege procession from Kenston Palace, which is the home, family home of um, his widow, um, Lady Gabriella Windsor, and it went to St James's Palace, and then the service was held at the Chapel Royal. 
very important historically. It's where Prince George was christened, where Queen Victoria was married. So, you know, it was a real sign of the respect in which he was held by the royal family. And obviously his um, in-laws, Prince and Princess Michael, were there, um, as well as Prince William mm. attended. Um, King Charles wasn't able to because of his treatment, but, um, you know, it was a, a big turnout for him. Um, and a very sad day. Oh, so shocking and sad. Uh, Rebecca, we've also seen some, though of course not all, of the Royals at the Cheltenham Festival this week. Yeah, we have. I mean, look, they love Cheltenham, uh, Queen in particular, and she was there, some nice images with her family. And there was a great image, which I'd love if we could show, of uh, Princess Eugenie and Zara arriving arm in arm, both looking really stylish <laughs> and just having real great fun in each other's company, you know, really good friendly cousins, love that was lovely. Yeah. And he's a bit like Anne, they're all kind of just friends with each other at this point. I mean, yeah. a lot of the ones they've fallen out with have sort of fallen away, but they're all just a gang now. Yeah, the, 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 royal, them left. the royals who get on don't seem to get as much light shone on them, do they, as the ones who don't? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> we're, so we're, we're very proud to do it here. Well, on Monday, as the world's media went into meltdown over the photos of Catherine and her children, Thousands of memes were created. We put out a special program of Palace Confidential looking at the row over the doctored royal photograph. So do check back to watch that after if you missed it. Now, Rebecca, you were covering royal engagements on Monday, so you couldn't join us for that show. But I know you've got a lot of thoughts on this subject, and I know that our viewers would be really keen to hear them. Yeah, unfortunately, sorry I couldn't take part. I was at the Commonwealth Day service, but, but I do. And I think it probably is best encapsulated by a piece I wrote for the Daily Mail on Wednesday and I spoke to a lot of, I suppose I would describe them as allies of the princess, people in the household, out the, outside the household but with very close links and all of them are of one opinion, as, as am I I have to say, that what happened shouldn't have happened, it, it was a mistake, um, but she, you know, within 24 hours, less than 24 hours, had come online and very openly said, look, this is my fault, I'm sorry, and uh, the people I've spoken to think, look, that should be accepted, a line should be drawn underneath it, and she should be allowed to move on. Mm. Um, it doesn't negate the fact that there was a mistake in the first place, and I think it's worth mentioning, because it was in that piece of mind, that people I've spoken to have said that Catherine is not unaware although she doesn't have her own social media presence, she's not unaware of a lot of the speculation that we've seen about her health and welfare over recent weeks. And there's been some really vicious, nasty and slanderous stuff out there on social media. She is aware of it and she has found it very, very upsetting. And I think, you know, all of us, I mean, we all get a lot of trolling on social media because of the jobs that we do, and that's not an nth of what she gets. And I think that's a lot of weight on her shoulders, particularly at a time where she's recovering from what clearly is serious surgery. And I think people just need to back off and leave her alone. Why do we think it just got so crazy? I mean, I do think it wasn't hand, this whole this situation, I do think it hasn't been handled particularly well by Kensington Palace in as much as there was a little bit of naivety that you know one of the world's most famous women could suddenly go out of the public eye for three months and people not to speculate about it and I think as I said in my piece often that speculation came from a good place that people are very fond of her mm. and want, look, we just want to know mm. is, is everything okay with her yeah. so I, do, I think they should have come out and said something earlier rather than just wait to what they traditionally do on Mother's Day, I know that's their policy, but in this day and age, sometimes you've got to tap dance a little bit more cleverly around that. Um, but I think what we've seen directed at her is, is just you know, unbearable for anybody, mm. let alone someone who's just trying to recuperate from really serious surgery. Mm. Richard, um, I, I think there will be a lot of sympathy for some of the comments from earlier this week's show. But, you know, lots of people asking why is this such a, a huge media story? To your mind, why is it so newsworthy? Well, it was tricky because I mean, we decided to do a special programme about it on Monday just because it was a big news story. And obviously lots of people are saying, come on, it's not a big deal. It's just a devoted mother making a few edits to a family photograph which they've shared with us, which is completely true. But what turned it into a big story was it's the first time I've ever known that an official photograph from the royal family 
has been rejected yeah. by um, the world's biggest picture agencies. And you know, also because it's the first official photograph we've seen of Catherine since Christmas Day, there was huge interest in it, so there's that. But also it taps into this wider issue of, of trust. All of us in the media at the moment face this issue of how do we deal with AI and the ability for anyone um, which is being promoted by the mobile phone companies to change your photos. You yeah. can go out now, someone can send us a photo from the street, do some adjusting and send it to us and it might not be quite actually what happened. Yeah. So those agencies, just like other organisations like us, have policies now that we don't use it. So that's sort of what, what made it into a much wider interesting issue and I think that's why we devoted a programme to it. But mm. obviously there was um, a lot of sympathy from, from all of us towards towards Catherine over it. Yeah. I think it's worth, sorry to interrupt, no, but pointing out that some people are asking, well, how does this differ from all the kind of heavily edited photographs we see celebrities putting on their Instagram um, accounts? And, it, and, it, and it's a valid question. But as, as, as you were rightly saying, Richard, um, and I don't think people probably understand this, is that, yes, the picture was put up on their social media by Kensington Palace to start off with, but then five minutes later, it was issued by the palace to these news agencies to distribute in the normal way as a news image. And as you rightly yeah. say, they are subject to very strict rules because people are so worried about the, you know, the use of picture manipulation and AI to the extent, and I didn't realise this until this week, they're not even allowed to put out a picture of someone that's had just the red eye from the flash rubbed out. Oh, really? It. They can't mm. even do that. Um, it has to be a really authentic news moment. I mean, people do maybe adjust the tone of a picture, you know, maybe lighten a few shadows, but that is it. You can't, they can't put out an image that, say, a hand appears to have been moved or something like that. They're just not allowed and to do that. So they, they had no choice. Shows really. how good Kate must be as a photographer because she, until now, because of her illness, has taken all those photos, has taken a lot mm. of her own photos. Mm. She, and obviously, if you can't edit them, then she's done a really good job. And yeah. I think the other problem is that William was taking the picture and <laughs> maybe didn't do a very good job. And it had to be tweaked, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the viewers might not know how much care we do take about his photographs. I mean, you know, on, on the diary, I'm often given some pretty um, astonishing photographs. Oh, really? Have never Sounds like a whole other show that we can <laughs> launch here. <laughs> They've never seen the light of day because we have whole procedures about, you know, what were the circumstances in which it was taken? You know, was it in a private place? Was it this? And we have to be assured first that we're, we're happy with the circumstances. Mm. And, and that's the thing. So it is a, it's a big, wider issue. Interestingly, Charlotte, and possibly inevitably, uh, the story has dredged up a few pictures of the Sussexes that people have been asking questions about. Yes, well, people immediately started saying, well, the Sussexes do this. They've done that. They've, done, they've doc um, doctored their photos. And I think there was one holiday card I say that in the American term, holiday card, a few years ago, and it did look like it had been doctored, but it was a holiday card, so they sort of created an image that said Happy Christmas on it, you know, so maybe we'll they, excuse uh, that I, one. I should add, they also denied that there was any... Even on the holiday like, card, yeah, yeah and, but, um, but fine, because they were putting together an image, so, you know. But then what people started saying was, do you remember that picture of uh, Meghan lying down on Harry's lap with her bum under a tree? And social media started saying, well, this has obviously been doctored. This was doctored. That tree was never there. And so the next thing that happened was Miss Anne Harriman, who took the picture, then released the original picture the in colour. colour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On, and with the metadata showing, because that's a lot of the debate that we've had this week is about metadata. So we've learned from metadata, which is the data behind the photograph, how many times Kate's was doctored, which was twice. Um, so Miss Anne said, look, here's my metadata, which proves it hasn't been doctored, and here it is in colour, and by the way, that tree really was there. Good here's the him. tree. Yeah. And also it showed that he'd taken the picture on his iPad as well, which is a great advert for Apple, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just took his iPad and just snapped them, you know. Whereas Kate's, we learned from her metadata, was taken with a professional camera. Um, so anyway, so the Sussexes then hit back, I suppose via Miss Anne Harriman, and said, well, we don't doctor our photos, and if we did, we'd never get away with it. Um, and, and then that was sort of through sources who'd leaked, leaked those quotes to America. Uh, and then they hit out and said, we didn't leak those quotes to America. So it yeah. just became a whole jumble of ends. sort of Sussex 
drama that was actually completely unrelated, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And they must have been so annoyed thinking, like, dudes, leave us out of this. <laughs> this is like, for yeah. once, you know. Yeah. But um, I have, just a quick aside, as a, a former magazine editor, the number of times that people would shout, Photoshop retouching, when I knew it wasn't, it hadn't happened. It's like, oh, really? people always think they're seeing it when it's not even there. So that was, when I first saw the things online saying, this photo's been Photoshopped, I was like, oh yeah, pro probably not. Everyone always thinks that. But anyway, but in light of all this, Rebecca, do you think there will be changes of strategy or even personnel within the palace as a result of all of this? I mean, that's a good question, and one I hope I answered in the piece I wrote on Wednesday, which is, um, I don't think it will affect any personnel. Um, what was explained to me by several very good sources is the one thing the Welleses will never do is leave a member of their staff hung out to dry. That's not the way they operate. They're very loyal to their staff. And that um, Catherine wanted to tell the truth, which is that she was the one who just looked, as she said, like got a lot of amateur um, photographers, looked at trying to make the picture just look a bit more composite. And, and unfortunately, um, you know, that hasn't gone down very well in, in some quarters. Um, so I don't think, I mean, I, I, I do think that it does show they need to keep a slightly tighter control on this. And I suspect what's happened is that, you know, the, I, well, in fact, I know the picture didn't come in until quite late on Saturday from her. Um, they've looked at it, probably like everyone has, like we all did on Sunday morning, going, oh, that's a lovely picture. Yep, we'll put that out. Mm -hmm. And no one's looked at it that closely. So I think hopefully they might do that a little bit more closely next time and just make sure what they're putting out is not just up to the standards of what looks nice, it's up to industry standards as well. It's, but no, I yeah. mean, as, as for their staff, they would, you know, they would go through hell and high water to protect them. But Willie is probably banned from taking the pictures from now on. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but Richard, I know that you would like to see some changes to protect the Waleses from more of these kind of attacks. Yeah, I mean, with respect to what, um, you know, Rebecca's just said, um, I just think it's not good enough at all. You know, yes, this is the point I made in our special edition that, um, you know, the officials, it is their job to ask those difficult questions and, you know, not just to receive something and say, oh, put it out, you know, like it's just something, you know, I mean, they've got to take responsibility in the same way that the editor of the Daily Mail does for what's published in, in his newspaper. But it's you know, a really difficult circumstance because William's saying, I don't want anyone at Adelaide Cottage taking pictures because, you know, it's a really, yeah. really deep, pri deeply private place. My wife's really ill. I just want this to be me, K Catherine, and maybe one member of staff who puts it online. He didn't want to have it so professional and, and have too yeah. many people involved because it's um, such a special, difficult time for them. Yeah, that, that's fine. But then those officials need to ask about the circumstance of the picture. Have you made any changes? you know, um, have a look at it carefully, you know, was it a good idea not to wear your wedding ring, this type of thing. And just things that occurred to us as soon as we saw the picture, you know, mm. why does um, Catherine look slightly blurred in the picture, things like that. And I don't think they did their job at all. And yes, I think they should be changed. I made the point in the Palace Confidential newsletter this week that William needs better staff. It's not good enough just to have yes men that just nod things through. He needs staff who will ask difficult questions, make themselves unpopular, and that's how he'll become a good king. Well, but we know that, you know, William can be quite tough to stand up to, don't we? And, you know, we've had lots of positive PR for the Wales as Charlotte over the years, but it's not always a given that you'll get that positive press. It hasn't always been the case. Do you think they need to start having contingencies and role-playing? What happens when we, when we come up against this bad... Yeah, I think they're not um, well practiced with bad publicity. They get a lot of good publicity and the Sussex would probably grumble and say, God, we get all the bad publicity. They get an easy ride. But the famous one, of course, is that Jamaica trip yeah. where they shook hands through the railings. You know, a bit of role playing on that scenario would have been a good idea. But again, they were under, operating under instruction from the Queen for that, weren't they? Because she was really keen that they stood up in the car, which also looked quite colo colo colonial. Um, so I think they probably should role play. I'm sure they will reassess their strategy from now on, for sure, because, but they're just not used to it. It just doesn't happen very often. They don't have huge clangers. Well, we do have lots more to discuss, including Prince Harry's US legal battle. But let's first look at some of our comments from Monday's show. Deidre Smith had this to say about the language used in the reports. I think using the word manipulated versus edited or photoshopped is making it sound suspicious. Everyone edits their pics. 
while Penny Wynn, meanwhile, has this solution for the whales, as my suggestion is they don't release any photos. Job done. Leave them alone. The media is rubbing its hands. How many hours have they been able to spend talking about this non-story? Thank goodness we haven't had to do any work on proper news stories. Thank you, Richard. Probably the kindest comments I have heard. Sally Gardner, meanwhile, says, I think this incident absolutely confirms exactly why William moved to Adelaide Cottage and craves some family privacy for his family especially because of Catherine's health. Meanwhile, a couple of cheeky commenters made the link between the story and our very own green screen here at Palace Confidential. Look, we've never pretended that this is anything but that, although I do sometimes secretly like to pretend it's my actual house. <laughs> but, no, but, you know, what it looks like without, if you're wondering, well, here you go. We could be this, or this, or this. That's enough of that. And I also want to come clean and say that this photo has been manipulated <laughs> on the back of my Palace Confidential cards. Shame. I always yeah. thought it was it's real. It's time to speak my truth. Well, our other special video that went out on Monday was Rebecca's profile of Prince Edward at 60. Again, if you missed that one, head back after the show. Lots of lovely comments coming in on that one. Susan Reed wrote, so underappreciated both Edward and his beautiful wife Sophie. They are as big a boon to the monarchy as the Prince and Princess of Wales. Just extremely low key. Happy birthday, your Hi Royal Highness. I should add, your Royal Highness. Josiah Stalbert had this to say, I believe that the death of Prince Philip and the Queen has affected Prince Edward more deeply than his siblings. While Lorraine Hughes-Smith says, absolutely love Rebecca. She has a wealth of knowledge, and even though she is quite close to the royal family, her attitude is truthful. She doesn't pander to them. No, uh, true to the rumor that Lorraine Hughes-Smith is actually Rebecca's mum. Uh, <laughs> but who are we to disagree? We are fans of the new Duke of Edinburgh and Rebecca. And if you do, if you are a fan of the Duke of Edinburgh, you will want to stick around for something special a little bit later in the show. Before that, though, there's still a lot to talk about, and we're going to kick this section off with the Sussexes. Rebecca, there's been lots of discussion that they've appointed a new UK publicist. Now, given their approach to particularly the British press, in the past. What, what do you make of that? This has really intrigued me, I have to say, because a few years ago, uh, the Sussexes, through their people in America, put out a very, I would say pompous, some people would say honest, uh, statement in which they said, we cannot stand the popular press in the UK, we are going to have absolutely nothing to do with them. Um, zero cooperation, I think, was the phrase that was used. Now, that was very interesting because as a journalist, you know, we have a really stringent set of um, checks and balances that we do to ensure our stories are as accurate and as fair as possible. And one of those is speaking to the people concerned or their representatives to say, look, is this correct? And the week they put out that statement, I, uh, the, the newspaper was given a tip about a story to do with the Sussexes. My gut instinct was that that story was wrong. I spoke to a lot of contacts and I, I convinced myself, yeah, I, I don't think this is right. Then my next step was to go to the Sussexes PR and say, look, I've been asked to look into this story. I don't think it's correct. What's your feeling? They said, no, we don't, we don't, we don't think it's correct because of X, Y and Z. I said, fine, as a result of that, I will go and speak to the editor and we won't run the story. Uh, then at the end of the week, we are being told, you know, publicly, you don't do your job properly. <laughs> um, uh, so we're not going to talk to you. And I, and I know their own staff were not very happy about this statement wow. at the time because they thought it was quite short-sighted and, and blinkered. You know, early on in the week, we'd had a really professional, productive conversation. And by the end of the week, we said, we're not even going to discuss stories with you. I don't, so, I, I'll never understand this idea that they wanted to shut down the checking of facts. I, and that's what it boiled yeah, down to. I, yeah. I respect this. They say, look, we don't like the kind of stories you recover. We're not going to offer you proactively information about what we do. That's absolutely fine by me. But to say we're not even going to allow you to fact check a story it is just utterly it was, crazy. It was weird. And, and, and not good for them either. Yeah, yeah. But Richard, when they moved to Canada and then America, it, it really has felt for so long like the UK is this afterthought, this distant sort of cousin we don't talk about you know um so but when they left and chased their hollywood dream but so what do we make of it now i think it's really notable isn't it i mean you might remember prince harry pictured in a sort of grainy image when they're on a flight from canada to california 
you know, he was talking about, oh, we're on a freedom flight yes. or something like that. You know, and there was that dreadful book, wasn't there? You know, Finding Freedom. And it was all about sort of escaping, you know, poor old Britain. Um, but yeah, things clearly don't appear to have gone so well. And now, um, you know, they clearly see the importance to them of Britain again. You know, they want to pay someone to do their public relations in this country. Why is that? And I think they've realised that Britain ultimately is the source of their income. You know, it might be American companies like Spotify or um, Netflix that are handing over the cash, but they're doing so because of that connection, that royal connection, and they need to keep that up. And so I think um, it's not great if in your homeland, um, for Prince Harry, you've become, you've gone from being the most popular member of the royal family to one of the least. What, what do you think of the timing? Why now for this move? To be honest, I'm really suspicious about the timing. Uh, come on, you know, we've got William and particularly Catherine having a hard time. You know, Catherine's had a major surgery, they're away from the cameras, so here we have them trying to jump into that, that space and appoint a PR um, manager to try to, you know, win back popularity it's, themselves. So I'm very suspicious. suspicious. Don't be suspicious. It's because, it's because Harry knows he's going to have to be in the UK a lot in the next few months because his dad's really ill. And so he's going to have to have some strategy in place for when there's endless reports about him coming, coming to the UK. Surely it's nothing that suspicious. It's not that Machiavellian. It's just he knows he's going to be spending more time. He said himself he's going to be spending more time in the UK. Um, you know, and his dad's ill and he wants to see his dad. I suspect it's also got something to do with the big plans that we're hearing about that Meghan is going to launch this big commercial project. And I presume this commercial project will have some sort of resonance in this country and they're going to need some PR for that too as well. How, how well it goes down is another question. Time will tell. Now, <laughs> Charlotte, do we have any idea yet who this publicist is? I personally don't think they signed on the dotted line with anyone yet and that they are, I think they are going to and I think it's in their sort of six month plan um, because again as I said I think they're going to spend, I think certainly Harry's going to spend more time in the UK and I think it's in their interest to have a little bit of strategy for the UK. So I think they're strategically planning, right, we've, we're going to get somebody on board. I just, I personally am not getting a sense from the people I know in the industry that they've actually signed on the dotted line. I mean, but who, I don't want to be rude, but who would want it? They rip through stuff. It feels like a stomach <laughs> ulcer waiting to happen for whoever he or she is. Well, there is a little bit of that. I mean, I'm writing about it on Sunday, but there is a bit of a sense. So I've obviously called a million PRs in the last week. <laughs> and, and there are a million. There yeah. really are a million. <laughs> and um, and by the way, you know, when they do sign on the dotted line, and it could be very soon, uh, you know, it's a very gossipy industry, the PR industry. So we'll find out, don't worry. And the mail will have it first, of course. But I, I, I do think that there has been a few people who have said, maybe I, I don't want to go near this. And not just because of Megan because some PRs find it really difficult dealing with the tabloid press and there's going to be a huge amount of interest and we start seeing Harry coming over here a little bit more there's going to be a lot a lot of work to do a lot of churn Rebecca Charlotte has said you know we, she fully expects to see Harry here more and more but we've always had the sense that Meghan will always avoid coming here as much as she can but do you see that changing it's a good question it's one I, I think I'm going to struggle to answer because I think everything we know so far, which is coming, again, from sources connected to her, but not her own mouth, but I, I think they're fairly legitimate, has said that she's done with the UK and didn't want to come here. But her children have a heritage here. Um, they have family here. They have a grandfather that they've barely seen since, um, since they were born. Um, and I think, inevitably, they will have to come back. And I'm, I'd like to think that you know, Harry wouldn't have to do that on his own. He would have his family, including mm. his wife's support. But, but who knows? I think equally she knows that, you know, her popularity is not overly high in the UK and that they might not get the welcome that they, they want. But they had a good strategy, though. They could yeah. be a way back. You know, I, I've spoken to one PR person this week. He said, the first thing I'd do is get her to make up with her dad because it looks a bit hypocritical that Harry's racing to his father's bedside when his father's ill, but she's not. Um, so I love this idea, they can tell Megan what to do. I'm not sure if that's fair. Can you imagine? We don't, I thought it'd be a good idea if you, We don't know, know the ins and outs of we that relationship. We don't know, but he, but he yeah. was just saying, look, I would have a strategy and it would start with that, and it would maybe a bit of a mere culpa, and there, there would be a number of hoops I'd try and encourage her to jump through. 
But then there maybe is some hope. So he's for not her getting the job, whoever that is. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> but don't forget, Donald Trump has all but said he's going to turf Harry out if he gets in, in, into power. So, you know, maybe they will actually have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Anyway, time for more popcorn <laughs> grabbing because, Richard, there's an extraordinary event uh, tonight, as reported in The Times, where William and Harry will be at the same event but at different times. Yeah, this is really unusual. We don't see Harry and um, William at many events together, so to speak. Um, tonight, Thursday evening, is um, the awards for the Diana Legacy Trust. And it's an organisation they're both involved in, obviously very important, because it's trying to continue the legacy of their, of their mother. So it's something that they, they care about a lot. Um, but it sounds like Prince William drew the line at actually appearing with his brother and who can blame him frankly. So William is going to attend these awards and I think hand out some prizes. Um, but after he leaves, someone will appear on a video screen, which will be his brother. Right. Um, so we're not... Ex so he won't even be in the room when his brother's on screen. Is that what we're to understand? No, we're, <laughs> we're, we're not expecting him to watch it. Yeah. Again, it's quite understandable because frankly, you can imagine all these sort of images of William having to stare at the screen while... All the cameras will pan to him, yeah. won't they? And just look, look at his every eye flicker. Yeah, so um, they're avoiding that, so he'll be gone by that point. That's good PR strategy, you see. Somebody's working behind the scenes and thinking these things through. <laughs> For once. For once. For once. <laughs> uh, but Charlotte, to a piece written in your paper now, uh, which was an update on the legal battle over Prince Harry's US visa, what's the story? Well, we're one step closer to finding out whether Harry ticked the box on his visa application <laughs> to say okay. that he basically took drugs, which is what he's admitted in Spare, his, his autobiography. And it's raised this question. The Heritage Foundation, which is a think tank in Washington, has raised the question for a long time now. It's been rumbling on for a couple of months, a few months. Um, you know, did Harry tick that box? And if he didn't tick the box, then he was possibly lying because he said he took drugs in Spare. Or if he did tick the box, you know, he was lying in spare. It's, it's a bit of a mess. But, you, you know, basically they're saying we really, really want to see this document. And we're one step closer to it now because a U.S. judge has asked for the document and will decide whether he's going to release wow. it. So, yeah, Richard, it seemed like this is one of those stories, that, an issue that was kind of dismissed as a bit of a, a non-issue for a while. But now the Heritage Foundation, the Heritage Foundation, sorry, seems more confident. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things that it seemed, you know, Harry and Meghan's sort of cheerleaders were, oh, this is nonsense, this will be thrown out immediately. But actually, it's clearly being taken very seriously. The fact that judge, the judge wants to see these documents for himself and decide. I mean, it's something which the boss of this um, think tank, the Heritage Foundation, Niall Gardner, um, takes very seriously. He's a former advisor to Margaret Thatcher, and he thinks, you know, she would approve of it because of her belief in freedom, and it's some obviously we'll never know she's been dead a long time, mm. but it, it's certainly one to watch and could cause a lot of embarrassment if not for Harry, then for the American government because what people want to know there is are there different standards? You know, mm -hmm. can VIPs just say anything yeah. in a note and, and be accepted while others have to actually take the information they give very seriously? So it is it is quite a, a big political issue. So do we know when we will know more? Nar Gardner said this weekend we're one step closer because the uh, judge, the US judge, is, is waiting for the documents. And then once he's seen the documents, he'll decide whether they're public. There's no timeline on it, but right. it could be soon. OK, well, watch this space. Now, Rebecca, on a less legal note now, Prince Edward has been given a new gong. This is something called the Order of the Thistle. What can you tell us about that? And did anyone not get one? <laughs> well, it's um, it's uh, it's very much like the Order of the Garter, which we often discussed about on the programme, but it's obviously pertaining to Scotland, the Order of the Thistle. And I suppose these kind of things happen when a member of the royal family has a significant birthday. What do you get for the you know member of the family who has everything? We'll give them a gong, basically. <laughs> um, but it's also a sign of um, thanks from the king, um, or it would have been from the late queen, uh, for everything you do, for the service that you've given me personally as monarch, but also as the crown. Um, there is obviously questions why Andrew hasn't, you know, got similar things yes. over, uh, over the last few years. I think people can, can draw their own conclusions to that. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a lovely gesture from the king to his brother. I'd say thank you. And just 
on that, I just wanted to also say thank you to all the people that have watched the little programme that we did, uh, myself and producer Luke, on the on Edward's 60th. Um, I think it's something like 230,000 yeah. have already watched it. And, it, you know, we didn't really know whether people would be wholly interested in it. So it's lovely, and, and not just watching it, but the reaction to it, the comments, that they really enjoyed learning more about Edward's work have all been university lovely. So thank you very much, everyone. Oh, oh. well, that's a nice note to end on. Well, sticking with Edward now, to mark his 60th birthday, we thought we'd bring together some of our favourite pictures of the Duke of Edinburgh over the years. belated birthday to Edward the Duke of Edinburgh from all of us here at Palace Confidential. My thanks as well to Rebecca, Charlotte and Richard and to you for watching. We will see you as always next week. Bye bye.